Hey y'all, it's Chloe and we're back with another video. This is a Ready to Love Season 3, Episode 5 review. I just want to let you guys know that I enjoy doing a comment read of your um, comments that you left on the last review. So don't forget to leave your comments down at the bottom, okay? Whether you agree with me, whether you don't agree with me, or whether you just want to get out some thoughts, okay? Because we will be reading them comments and discussing them later on this week, okay? So don't forget, leave them comments down below. And if you didn't press that subscribe button, just do it. Why not? <laughs> but anyway, you guys, let's just get right into this episode. So... Brian and Alex are up, you know, uh, jump roping, okay? Getting a little jump rope on, a little workout in, okay? And Alex asks Brian, how was your date with Alicia? And he's like, I mean, it was cool, but, you know, I had to come get my little kids goodnight from you or whatever the case may be. He had to get his little fix, okay? And, you know, Alex is just eating it up. She's still, like, on cloud nine from, you know, actually him coming to see her and she had on her bonnet and and you know Chris was like you probably look better than you did any other day with the bonnet on men like natural they say they like natural but it's hard to believe because they always want to go for the you know fake bodies eyelashes extra makeup type of girl just saying just saying but anyway Chris and Brian are just happy that, you know, <laughs> the table's turned this week. That they don't got to worry about getting eliminated and it's all on a woman, okay? It's time for them to do them, okay? <laughs> I was like, well, I mean, that would be a good reason to be excited because, like, I would be happy if I would know for a fact I wasn't getting eliminated this week and that I got the power, you know, to eliminate someone. It's a power shift. It's a power shift. And, you know, men like the power, so they was happy about that. But anyway... Now, Rashid decides that he's going to go pull Denise to the side because, you know, her calling him a narcissist is just not sitting right with him, okay? He's like, I need to go talk to her. I need to get this off my chest, discuss it, and see what the problem is, all right? So now when he sits down to talk to her and tell her what the problem is, she's like, first, I want to apologize for her. Talk about Adriana, okay? Because, you know, I'm, I, I've lived a long life, okay? And, like, I don't think she can understand where I was coming from. No, she understood where you was coming from. She said what you said. You're the one backtracking saying, I didn't say he was a narcissist. I say he has traits of someone I know. And blah, 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 gerba. Gerba. She then goes into this whole spill about how she's 49 and she's been through a lot and, and she's seen a lot and she's old enough to know what triggers her and what traits she don't like. And, you know, it is what it is. I'm like, wait, 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 what? So it's just basically is what it is. Like, so basically you could tell him that he has traits of a narcissist and basically, you know, talk about his character. and You don't even know him. It is what it is. Denise, I'm going to need you to get it together, honey. And I'm glad that she kind of did towards the end of this episode because I was like really not feeling her in the beginning. I'm just saying, really not feeling her. Um... Rashid says he understands, but it does not excuse the simple fact that, you know, she called him a narcissist. Period. Like, even when he was trying to explain to her about, like, how he's like, I hear things like that and it upsets me because I value my character and my integrity. And she's just, like, integrity. Like, like jumping in, like, talking with him. Instead of sitting back, listening to what he's saying, take it in and then respond. It's like she couldn't even give him a chance to get what he wanted to say out. She basically had to jump in, throw her story out there, and that's just that. I was just like, I just can't, y'all. That 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 conversation between them really just worked on me. It really just worked on me, okay? Now, Edwin and Naya are going to sit down and they're talking, okay? Now, Edwin's talking about a pendant that he, a dog tag that he wears that reminds him that he has to live his life to the fullest, okay? And he's like, let me just stop because I could go on and on and on. And we know Edwin can go on and on and on and on. But then um, Naya's like, no, I understand. I get it. Like, you know, I've had four miscarriages, okay? I lost my mom and my grandmother two months apart from each other unexpected and I said wow that's strength okay that's a lot you lose your mom and your grandma you and you lost four babies that I'm pretty sure she wanted to have because it affected her oh 
my heart went out for her at that moment okay her and edwin are like really like you know clicking they like bonding they like really understanding each other and i think she's good for him because she understands some of the trauma he went through and i think he can relate to some of the trauma she been through and that they'll be good for each other because sometimes you have to find what someone else can help make you better in and maybe he can help her and she can help him i see it okay if he's she's broken a little bit and he's broken a little bit and they're fixed on certain ends and fixed on certain ends and they could come together and make each other whole you know make each other whole <laughs> i like them i like them and i was a little like you know remember how last episode i was like you know naya and chris is a thing okay Ain't nothing gonna come they not entertaining nobody else and all this other stuff now look at them entertaining other people look at this <laughs> that Naya, she's going to start some trouble because Chris is going to be the one to be like, uh-uh, okay, uh -uh, don't do it. <laughs> but she did say that, you know, she was attracted to Chris because he was attracted to her. So he was the only one checking for her, so she might as well have just checked for him too. So now she's just opening up and getting to know other people. And Edwin seems to strike her fancy. Yep. He seems to strike her fancy. <laughs> now, so Alicia went to Chris, Joy, Messy Shay, and Anthony are sitting down. And Alicia is ready to spill the tea, okay? She got some tea she wouldn't spill. Some tea she wanted to spill, okay? And she's like, so y'all know I was feeling Brian or whatever. And y'all know we went on a date. And, you know, I invited him back to my room and he didn't come. And then we we bumped into him at Naya's room. No, that's not what happened. Okay, what happened was you invited him back to your room. Messy Shay decided that she saw, Messy Shay decided that she was going to go get be messy and go get you so y'all could go see what was going on down the hall. That's what happened. Okay, you didn't just happen to like notice what was going on. Somebody came and got you and y'all creeped through the hallway like a bunch of kids in high school to go see what was going on. And then you caught an attitude because he wasn't honest with you. But you made it kind of hard to be honest when you're basically throwing your at him. Okay, you was basically, you gonna come back? You gonna watch a movie? Oh, that's gonna be good. Okay. Okay, yeah, come back. You basically, I mean, like, what did you want him to say? Nah, I'm not gonna come back. <laughs> And then hurt your little feelings and then you be mad like, well, he don't want me. You know, all extra. Because we can tell that's how you handle situations. Because not like an adult, instead of, you know, having a conversation with him about it. And having a conversation with Alex about it. You got to go tell everybody and their mama at the table. Okay? Everybody and their mama. And now Joy is gets up and Joy's like, well, I got some tea I want to spill too. And I'm like, oh Lord, this is just the table of tea. This is just the tape. I should have had some tea for this conversation too, okay? Now, Joy's talk, telling Winter how Simone brought up the simple fact that she went to his room, that he went to her room the night, um, the other day. And how, you know, she don't know what her intent was, but it seemed like she was trying to be, you know, a little, a little, you know, um, shady or whatever the case may be. So then, after um, they're having a the conversation, here come Messy Shay, like, mm, do you think that she's just trying to get y'all out the way so she could come in and get it, like, divide and conquer? And I'm like, here she go trying to stir up some more drama. And Chris even said it, like, she's still trying to stir up some more drama. Y'all, I'm just sitting here like, will she just shut up? Just shut up. Why? Why is it necessary? Why is this called for? You're making things worse than what they are, okay? It's bad enough that Winter Little Feelings is hurt. It's bad enough that Joy Feelings is hurt. Now y'all putting in this girl mind that Simone over here trying to divide and conquer. <laughs> I was like, mm-mm. She messy. She's so messy. Too messy for me. Too messy for this show because this isn't the bad girls club. This isn't that. This is ready to love. You need to be focused on finding you a man to love. How about that? How about that? So Chris is over there like, I thought Brian was done with the F-boy shenanigans. <laughs> like, I thought he was done being the F-boy. <laughs> like, he got to make this right. He got to fix this. And I'm sitting here like, yeah, he do got to talk to her. He do got to make it right. He tells him that he didn't ghost her. He zombied her. I was like, zombied her? What the heck is zombied her? So apparently, because he didn't ghost her, like, he was still, you know, around. He's still available. He's still kind of like a zombie, okay? He's not necessarily necessarily ghosting her y'all i said oh yeah he's still on some f-boy junk i'm not even going 
won't give him a pass because that excuse right there was some BS. Okay, that was an F boy excuse. Okay, basically. So, like grown women, the ladies decide that they're going to go talk to Simone, okay? Winter and Joy are deciding, like, you know what? Let's just go talk to Simone and just get down to the bottom of this whole situation instead of doing this he say, see, she say BS, basically. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you. That's what Alicia should have did. But that's either here or there, okay? So, <clears throat> When they go get, you know, Simone, they're like, oh, let her sit in the middle so it don't seem like we, you know, attacking her. And I'm like, either way, it's going to be like attacking, girl. If y'all sit here, if y'all sit there, if y'all sit in the middle, if y'all sit wherever, it's still going to come like that because y'all both coming at her. And I'm not saying that you don't need to come at her. I mean, if you think she should sit in the middle, makes perfect sense, then cool with me. Cool with me. Obviously, she didn't feel that attacked. I mean, I wouldn't want nobody coming from me for both ends. If y'all going to do it, do it together at one side so I can know where to direct this energy to. <laughs> Just my opinion. Just my opinion. But anyway, so Winston's like, I know you made a comment about Jay coming back to my room half naked. And no, I don't know what your intent was. I don't know what was the purpose of you doing that because I thought we were cool. And if you felt some type of way, then maybe you should have came back to me. So she's like, um... She did mention that it was only for a couple of minutes, but it's none of her it's none of her business what they did or how long he was there. And I was like, exactly. Like, that's nobody's business what they did in their room. They are all grown adults. They're single, technically, and they're dating. So if he and went to decide they was going to go in that room and do whatever they wanted to do, that was up to them completely. You are not the police of who can go in and out of anybody's room. So I'm glad that Winter made it a point to state that it doesn't matter what we was doing. It doesn't matter how long we was in there. I just want to know why you decided that you was going to go back and tell Joy like we in high school. Okay? So Simone's like, um, no, we are cool. We are cool. I have an issue with either one of you. Okay? So Joy is like, so why did you think you needed to tell me um, about, you know, Winter and Jay going to the room together? And she was like, well... I, I'm, I, I am going to say it was a, a little part of me being insecure, you know, because I'm used to being chased. I apologize to you and I apologize to you. So now she's apologizing, okay? And Winston's like, now that don't make me feel good, okay? That don't make me feel good at all because now I feel like you was intentionally trying to make it seem like I'm basically a hoe. <laughs> she didn't say that, but that's what it was getting at. It was like, you was trying to make it seem like I was out here doing, you know, God knows whatever. Okay? And I don't like the way that makes me feel. Like, in her confession, she was like, I'm all about empowering, inspiring, uplifting black women. So it hurt me for her to do that. And I was like, oh, in that moment when she was talking about how she wanted to empower and uplift, you can tell the hurt. And I felt it because I was like, oh, it's so real. Like, there are some women who will really support and be there for you and then there are some women who are there to tear you down and that's what Simone was trying to do and it I understood it because it was like why why did you do that why were we acting like we we're in high school that's when Simone is over there like I'm I, I, I just have a lot of things to work on and that's why I'm here this isn't Ayala fix my life that is not why you're here honey you're not here because you have things to work on you are here because you're supposed to have worked on some things and now you're ready to find love I need you to make it make sense Simone is not ready to find love she's still playing these childish games and that's why she's single Okay, she can't handle someone not being all over her and being insecure. And because she felt that way, she thought it would be best to go and try to mess up somebody else's junk. Girl, girl, when's her time? Her, her time coming? Somebody let me know. I hope it's next week. I hope it's next week. But anyway, um, Shay, so Simone starts crying, then Joy starts crying, and then Winter starts crying. And all this time, I'm like, oh my God, it's contagious. Everybody's crying. <laughs> but I'm one of those people. When somebody cry, I cry. Everybody cry, I'm crying. I just be crying. But I can't help it. It's an emotional reaction. So I think that's what happened in the whole situation because as women, they realize what had happened and what transpired, and now they want to come to a resolve and they want to fix it. Now, I know that they did come to a peace with the situation, but if I'm Joy and if I'm Winter, I am going to be side eyeing Simone and I am going to keep her at a distance because I already know she likes to be messy. And I've noticed that when things don't go her way, she's going to try to mess up other people's stuff. And I ain't got time for nobody coming in between my love, okay? Okay, so that's what they need to do. Keep an eye on her, okay? Keep an eye on her. But anyway, 
Now, we get over to Messy Shay. Messy Shay is over there we're telling Alex about, you know, Alicia and Brian's date because that's her business, okay? That's her business to be spreading because she was the one who went and found what was going on, invited Alicia to the party, and now she wants to spread the business to Alex because, oh, it's going to make Alex feel some type of way. Definitely. Definitely. So Alicia comes out like, oh, I know my ears is ringing. Y'all talking about me? And she's like, yeah, we were talking about your date and the aftermath. Like, she's excited about the drama. And I'm like, yes, okay, we in high school again. It's obvious. It's apparent. Okay? So while she's sitting there talking about, you know, what happened between um, Brian and Alicia, Alicia's like, well, I really want to talk to Brian. Um, so, could you go get him for me? And I was like, ooh, what kind of... Let me tell you something. <laughs> you are not about to go send me to go get my man for you. Absolutely no. Okay? Even though Alex was a little upset and a little hurt because you know it's about trust, okay? If you playing games with her, you could play games with me. And I understand that. But at the same time, you're not about to go be like, so can you go get him for me? And I'm gonna be like, sure, I'm gonna go. So she goes over to Brian and is like, Alicia wanna talk to you. Right then I would have been like, for what? I wanna talk to you, Alex. <laughs> but that's just me. That's just me trying to avoid the situation, okay? I would have just stayed over there with Alex and tried to explain to her what really happened before I went over to Alicia because I would want to make it right with Alex because I already know Alicia going to be mad. But that's just my opinion. That's why I can't be no man. <laughs> but um, Alicia is talking to uh, Brian and she's telling him, like, that was some, you know, effed up that you did like you said you was coming back instead of just saying you wasn't going to come back you instead of saying you coming back you should have just said nah i'm gonna just take it down for the night this that and the other he's like well you know i didn't really know how to be that straightforward or whatever i can tell both sides so this is my thing okay like he said when they were sitting in the lounge talking to tommy he was saying that he doesn't know like he didn't want to go back to her room end up doing something with her and then ruin his chances with alex but he didn't know how to tell her I don't want to come back to your room. And that's understandable because some men don't know how to do that. And plus, he didn't want to hurt her feelings. Now, I do understand that she just wanted some honesty, which is understandable. But like I said, how honest, how how can you be so honest with a man when you, you how can a man be so honest with you when you're throwing his, you when you're throwing your at him okay because that's what she was doing let's keep it 100. She didn't really want him to come back and cuddle and watch some movies. She was trying to get all up under him okay. Okay, now. So now here go Messy Shay all over again, all over again, all over Rashad, all over Rashid, okay? She all feeling on him and she all, you know, talking about how she ready to be submissive. She twerking for submissiveness, twerking for submissiveness, okay? And she all throwing her butt back and she all being extra, okay? And she looks like she's drunk, okay? I'm just going to say that she looks like she's drunk. And Rashid is like, um, so Shay um <laughs> um i was like exactly um what are you doing what, what is going on here why are we doing this why are you making a fool of yourself on tv why are you throwing your ass back at this man and he didn't even ask for it he don't even seem interested okay i'm just saying i'm just saying like literally fondling all over him girl oh that's shay mm -mm -mm, that damn shay but anyway so Jay and Joy have a conversation about what happened, okay? And it was cool. Now, the conversation that struck me was the conversation that Jay had with Winter. Now, when Jay was talking to Winter about how he, you know, he loves her peaceful spirit, how she's so peaceful. And she says, I love your quiet strength. Like, you don't have to come in and be all, you know, hard and demanding. Your presence just says it all. And I sat there and I said, ooh, yes, girl, speak it. It was like I felt that connection. And I feel like after that. There's no way Jay could not be feeling Winter a little bit more than Joy. Because that conversation that they had was real intense based on the conversation that Joy and Jay had. Yeah, it was cute. Yeah, it was sweet. But I mean, when they got down to it, like why they like each other, it was very apparent. Okay, it wasn't just, oh, because we could always keep it 100 with each other. It was more about their personality. It was more about their presence. It was more about their spirit, okay? That's a connection. That's a bond. And I was here for it, period. <laughs> now, 
um Kafani and Adriana are playing a game and Kafani is just like you know he's feeling Adriana but all the things he's feeling about Adriana is basically her appearance okay her height how pretty she is her curves you know all that good stuff and I'm like okay we get it Adriana's pretty but is it any more a little bit more in depth with um Adriana that you like because all the things you said was basically you being attracted to her physical person now Adriana is over there and she's like, I like Kafani. Um, I'm really feeling him when I'm around him. It's like I'm in high school. It's like I'm in high school. And she says something like, I don't know if I should stick with a safe, good thing talking about Rashid or if I should stick with, or if I should go for a great new thing talking about Kafani. Now, I'm just saying here, like, how do you know that Kafani is going to be great? And how do you know that Rashid is just going to be good? Just because he's your safe option don't mean he can't be great for you. But I do, um, you know, want her to experience it. But I don't want her to put the whole great and good out there just yet because she hasn't gotten the full picture of Kafani and she hasn't gotten the whole picture of Rashid. She only got bits and pieces of them to be able to call one great and one good. You know what I mean? But I do know what she mean by playing it safe and going out of your comfort zone. But to be honest, I don't feel like Kafani is too far out of her comfort zone. If you want to be, if you want really want to ask me i feel like he would be her type in real life just saying just saying now so all the guys go back and meet with tommy in the lounge okay and tommy is like okay so you guys i told you to focus on chemistry so who is you who are you feeling who are you feeling so jay is like i'm feeling joy of course and winter and i'm just like yes just go for winter okay i'm done with you and joy already <laughs> Y'all, I'm so wishy-washy. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Y'all, y'all don't y'all don't think Winston might be a better fit for Joy now? I mean, a better fit for Jay now? I don't know. Y'all let me know down in the comments. But anyway, um, Kafani is like, I'm really feeling Denise. Of course, I've been feeling Denise from the beginning. I'm still feeling Denise. And I'm gonna throw me in some Adriana up in there, okay? He was just like, um, he just feels some type of way that Denise is a little, you know, possessive okay and uncle uh tommy asks him how does he feel about him being possessive by her being possessive and he's just like i don't really like it so in order for denise to keep Kalfani, she's gonna have to calm down a whole lot okay and let the process happen the way the process is supposed to happen he will come back to you but you have to let him go out and make sure that there's no one else out there for him. But anyway, um, Chris is like, Naya, okay? I might as well start charging her rent right now in my head because I, she lives in my head. She lives there, okay? And he's, he's, in, he's in it, okay? So now when Edwin says that he's feeling Naya, you know, Chris feeling some type of way because I'm pretty sure he's trying to figure out when y'all had the time to get all, you know, into each other. When y'all had the time? <laughs> I can feel it. I can definitely feel it. But he also says he's feeling joy. And then when he says he's feeling joy, Jay kind of cut his eye at him. I said, oh, it's about to be a rumble, a rumble in the jungle, okay? Because now everybody's starting to get entangled with each other. Because what else is it to do when you're dating? Everybody's dating the same people in the house, but catch feelings, okay? Now, um, we get down to basically what I consider to be the bottom four. It was Shay, Alicia, Simone, and Denise. Now, this is where I was completely shocked because I honestly, honestly wish that it would have been Simone and not Denise. Even though Denise, you know, just got on my nerve in the beginning of the episode or whatever the case may be, I still feel like she may want love a little bit more than Simone. Not saying Simone doesn't want love, but I don't think Simone is ready for love because at least Denise knows what she wants and what she doesn't want and instead of Simone you know doing the work Simone rather start up the drama to try to get her man and that's not how it works that's not how it works but anyway um they send Edwin to go talk to Shay. They send Chris to go talk to Alicia. And they send Kafani to go talk to Denise. Now, when Kafani is talking to Denise, the whole time he's trying to, you know, tell her about, like, you know, calming down. Don't, you know, call people names when you don't know them like that. You know, stop being so possessive and things like that. Denise is handling it awesome. Like, she's, like, really listening to him. She's really, like, you know... You can tell for the first time in the whole episode, she sat back and she listened and she let him talk. And I said, that's because she's into him, okay? She respects him. And that's why she gave him the attention. But you could tell that she was nervous. I mean, you could see her breathing. 
through the whole thing. Like, you could tell, like, her anxiety was very high. Like, it was hard. It was like she just knew she was going home. And I was like, oh, my God. So when he told her she was going to stay, I felt relief for her, okay? Because I wasn't sure what was happening either. Now, Edwin is going to talk to Shay, and Shay comes in like, yeah, what's up? What's up? And I'm just saying, like, this is why you're in the bottom three now, girl, because you're the homie. You can't seem to figure it out. Um, She's just, like, you know, joking. Now she wants to apologize to Edwin about how she walked away. I'm like, this is not the time. This is not the time to apologize now, honey. You should apologize to him later on that day when you realize that he felt some type of way, not when you get in your private one-on-one -on -one conversation and you know you're about to go home. Just saying. So I was happy that she went home. Just saying. Now, Alicia, when Chris is talking to Alicia, Alicia just don't give an F, okay? She's just sitting here like, eh, okay, whatever, whatever. Like, come on, get it over with, get it over with. Because she really wasn't feeling none of the guys there anyway. She said, I was feeling Brian. I really went after Brian. And he um, he dogged me out. So I guess it is what it is because she's picky. And I'm like, girl, then why would you come on this show looking for love and all these types of men, but you only want to go after one? That's your problem. You put all your eggs in one basket and that was it so now you go home and you're not ready to love she claims that you know she's going to work on working um looking you know look looking into men outside of the box but i don't think so i think she's just stuck on what she want who she want and that's it now i've heard that mm -hmm, uh, i heard in a rumor that a home girl was pregnant i heard she was three months pregnant when they was filming I don't know how true it is, but that's what I heard. And if it's true, ooh, honey. Now, who said it? Chris said it. Chris had made a post like three months pregnant. So if she was really pregnant, was she really looking for love? I guess she really did mean, oh, you need to be able to take care of me and my kids when she said, are you going to be able to take care of me and my kids? <laughs> just saying. <laughs> now, she's just like, you know, she don't care. She just leaves. She's just like, um, whatever, I'm done. But he's like, I hate to see you go, but I love to watch you leave, okay? And I was like, alrighty now. The typical man statement. And I ain't gonna lie, she had a nice little body. So, I mean, if you got eyes, she was looking. Just saying. Now, Adriana is a little upset that, you know, not upset, but she's like, she doesn't really know what to do now that Denise is there because, you know, Denise is her competition when it comes to Confani. But she's like, you know, maybe I should just leave him alone. They're like, no, girl, don't do that. You know, that's that's not being that's not um that's being dishonest with yourself. That's not fair to you. You need to go after what you want and see if it's gonna work. So she's just a little, you know, a little hurt about the situation, but I feel like she'll be okay. She will definitely be okay. Now, when it comes to um Denise, Denise decided that since she was in the bottom three, it's time for her to step her game up, do the process, see if she got chemistry and feelings with anyone else. So she goes on a date with Anthony. Now, remember, Anthony was the one rubbing on her feet in the beginning. So they already got a little chemistry. You know, Anthony already said she was like in his top 10. I mean, his top three. So they was, you know, going on a date, see what's happening. Now, this is when I started to enjoy Denise because Denise was like laughing and joking. And she's making sexual jokes about like, oh, oh. I haven't been in this position in a long time when he comes up behind her and, you know, they doing the thing. And then she gets spontaneous, like, oh, if um, whoever loses, got to go skinny dip. And I was just like, oh, I like it. I like this, Denise, the fun, the open, you know, just nice. It was nice to see her in a different light, and I enjoyed it. And I'm glad that we got that from her. Now, she loses, but if she really goes and she strips down, not completely naked because she still don't have bottoms, but, you know, she's, like, holding it. He takes off her pants, and she jumps in. And I was like, oh, she's out for a good time, and I love it. And I'm just so happy that Messy Shay wasn't there to be like, ooh, guess what? They getting naked in the pool. Ooh, guess what? They half naked in the pool because that's what Messy Shay do. So I'm glad she wasn't there to, you know, make everybody come outside to see what was going on in the pool. Because Chris jumped in there too, half naked. I like it. <laughs> I like it a lot. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you guys, I enjoyed this episode. I don't know if I missed anything important that you guys want to discuss. But if I did, just leave it down in the comments and we'll talk about it in a comment read video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, peace.